This is uh, Roger at uh, Roger's Freestyle Machine Shop. There's my air compressor. We're going to do a little shop tour this morning. And that's my 7.5 horsepower air compressor. I got a 5 inch Wilton swivel uh, combination vise there. Uh, there's where the big shot sits when he's giving directions. I got a, uh, I think that's a Curtis Wright uh, cylinder and cylinder head I got from Billy Lane. That give you an idea what's going on here. Uh, there's one of my bikes I built up there in that picture. Got some safes. Got a nice cannonball safe. We'll go down the left side here first. Uh, there's a, a steam engine there, uh, 42 pound cannonballs back there, uh, they're the real deal. There's a baby chair for my, uh, or a kid's thing for my barber chair. Here's my, uh, my big cannonball safe. Got a, uh, Time lock on it. Uh, there's uh, some of my junk there. Uh, that's uh, I think a oxygen tank out of a B-17 bomber. There's a 200-pound hay button. It's got a real nice top on it. There's my, when I want to re use a real vise, that's the one I use right there. There's some of my vices back there, some Reed, uh, Columbian, uh, Wilton's of course. There's one of my little tables I put together. There's an old Wilton vise, that's from 1941. That was my dad's vise. I've got a bike table, of course it ends up being a shelf and and uh, once in a while I'll clean up everything and put stuff away. Uh, if you see anything in here you're really interested in, you feel like you have to have, you can always contact me and see if we can make some kind of a, a deal. My machinist tools tools. Here's one of, well we'll get to that in a minute. I picked this little shaper up. It's a Delta uh, Amco shaper and it's pretty nice. It's a nice machine. I don't know if I got that thing plugged in. There she goes. Yeah, we got picked that up out in Tucson, Arizona this winter. I was out there for the Rock and Gym show. I went to Tucson for the Rock and Gym and and uh, Mineral show, and I picked up a kidney stone while I was there. So I headed back home. That was a nightmare. Well, this is my newest, one of my new additions to the shop. Is this? Uh, five by five welding table, planting table, and I'm pretty sure it weighs close to 3,000 pounds. I got a six inch Wilton vise on it, and uh, some of the junk. I see guys making these things for these tables on uh, YouTube. Well, I just took, and took some of these cheap Chinese uh, C-clamps, cut off the end, and they make perfect clamps. They don't have to weld anything, just stick them down in the hole and they're ready to go. This is various junk that I I have on uh, on the table, different things. Uh, that little cutter there, that son of a gun really works nice. There's a big Beverly shear down there and underneath. And uh, yeah, we got Lots of stuff. Here's a little layout table I got. Got a surface plate there on it. 
uh, Wilton's, what do they call that, strong arm. It's kind of a neat little thing for welding and messing around with. And there's uh, a welder that I use. Well, I'm not much of a welder, but anyway, there's some of my uh, milling machine stuff is in there. I got this uh, Supermax mill, which is a nice big size mill, and I've got got a frequency drive on it, and that really, that really is the way to go with a milling machine, and uh, I've used that quite a bit. And uh, everything in here we use one time or another. There's a old farm engine hit and miss, it's a horse and a half economy. Some of my stockpile of uh, metal. There's a, uh, I think that's a 1901 Greenard Arbor Press. It's had some, had some abuse, but it's, uh, I still use that quite a bit. There's my champion drill press. Uh, there, it's kind of hard to see, but anyway, there it is. Let's get over here and we can see it better. I use that. That'll. I've got up, I think, two inch holes. There's a Ellis miter saw. There's an index milling machine, which I have for sale. Uh, that thing works good. I've got quite a bit of little tooling for it. And uh, it's got a uh, phase converter on it. If I had it, I'd, if I was going to keep it, I'd put a frequency drive on it. There's my do-all saw. And uh, as you can see, it gets used. My old Delco sander. Rockwell Delta sander. Got my fan up there for some hot weather. Another fan here. There's my little Harding's uh, second operation lathe or speed lathe or whatever they call it. I think that says U.S. Navy on the back. I think that's World War II. That's a nice little machine. It's got the collets and the collet closer. And I use that if I'm using collets. And here's my little Harding's horizontal mill, which I made the uh, I made the arbor and and I found a piece of sh shafting here in the shop. I put made that, put that in there. That's ground steel. I was lucky to have that. And then I made all this stuff here, and uh, it works good. It does a good job. I got a little buffer. Uh, once in a while I'll polish up something. There's my bridge port. I need to put a frequency drive on that. That I'm, Basically, I use that for a drill press. Uh, anyway, here's one of my latest additions to the shop that I really, really have enjoyed. I just picked this up. Uh, a friend of mine passed away, and I ended up with it. And uh, it's... Uh, they're nice little machines. That little Miford, the Super 7, I think is uh, is a far, of course, far superior to the ML7. But uh, I like it a lot. I mean, I'm going to keep that. And uh, I took the little Schoblin 70 watchmaker's lathe, Swiss lathe, to the house. I got it in my spare bedroom now. And, and in the afternoons when it gets hot, I... I sometimes I sit and uh, use that and make stuff. Here's another one of my little work things I put together. I got a Rockwell surface grinder back there. There's my uh, Rockwell 14 inch lathe and uh, it get used quite a bit. There's a uh, 1916 Indian Power Plus, pretty much complete, and uh, that's a nice little engine. You got the oil bag, you got the carburetor, you got the magneto on it, and uh, so anyway, there's uh, there's that stuff. 
I was in the bikes for quite some time. I'm not anymore much. There's some of my cannons. There's a uh, eight gauge strong cannon right there and some of the cannons that I made. I not only have that eight gauge strong cannon, I have a uh, two and a half gauge uh, cannon which is about five times bigger. I got a video on that if you're interested. There's a video on that. And uh, some of my junk. Here's a uh, some stuff I just picked up. This is a, a pretty nice little steam engine here. A uh, little mill type engine. It runs pretty nice. Uh, and then I got the boiler, which you can see the size of it there. Uh, nice size boiler. I haven't uh, fired that up. I sold that to a friend of mine many years ago and and uh, he passed away and I ended up with it uh, back again so uh, we got a that's one of the projects we're going to be working on and uh, there's another really nice steam engine a little two-cylinder uh, it's all aluminum that thing is, uh, is really a lot to it and very well made uh, that's a nice engine. Got the little ratchet oiler. Got everything reversing. I haven't got it really running real good yet. I haven't spent a lot of time with it. And uh, you can see some of my junk here. There's a bike I built, a uh, 74 inch flathead. That was the centerfold of the magazine. Uh, that's me sitting on there. And uh, Here's another Mifer. This is the ML7, uh, which it's a it's a nice little lathe. I'd say it's. Uh, I guess e this one's I would say is equal to a like a nine inch South Bend. Although this is a seven inch um, ML7, I think they call it. And it came with the uh, when I picked it up, it came with this weird English uh, electrical stuff. And that's uh, that's for sale. So there you pretty much have it. Uh, Rogers Freestyle Machine Shop. And our remember our motto is you're better off to do it poorly than not at all. And uh, so we do a lot of stuff, but not all of it is uh, is perfectly done. But we're here to have fun and enjoy ourselves and try to learn a little bit. Well, thank you for watching.